Hey everybody, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam, I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. Now, if you have been around my channel for long enough, you'll know that I used to have a series called Dear Friend. And in that series, I would deliver psychic messages to those that are near me or those that are lined up along my path to receive them. This is my way of doing anonymous readings and helping folks out free of charge. Please share this video with your family and friends as one of these messages may be for them. Part two is coming soon. Now for the first message. This message is for a young single mother. You're about 22 years old. I see that you like to wear short skirts and you live in either Connecticut or another state that has CN initials in it. It may also be a city uh, that has CN initials in the state of Connecticut. Uh, so your child is a boy, he's two years old, you live near a gas station. There are some kind of like neon green painting with like an off-white cream color on this gas station. It's very bright, stands out. It's right off the freeway and there is a bar that is in walking distance from that gas station. Uh, there is an older man that you often see and he's always nice to you and he offers you things. I'm getting the name Larry Joe. Maybe it's one name or maybe one of the names is his nickname. My message for you is he is not who you think he is and you'd be better off seeking help somewhere else or friendship. Remember seeking help or friendship somewhere else. Sometimes a smile and face is just a costume. Be careful, light and love to you. This next message is for Melissa Goldstein, which is not your birth name. You're 37 years old and you come from wealth. You currently work in hospitality. I get the feeling that your family has disowned you and this is not the first time that they've done so. You may be adopted or you're just the, bl the black sheep of your family. You've always stood out and that's largely in part to a trauma that's happened to you that wasn't your fault. Right now, you seem to be spiraling into drug addiction. Sure, you can keep clean and you present yourself well, but others are starting to see it and they're talking about you. My message to you is, please seek counseling and support for drug addiction. I was told not to give you any numbers to call. For some reason, that's what my team said, don't give you any numbers to call. You're supposed to seek out help for yourself. Light and love to you, I know you can do it. So this is my last message for today. This message comes from a woman named Gwendolyn, who has already passed over. Now, Gwendolyn was African-American. She was 41 years old in the 70s. She was a chain smoker from Compton, California, where she was a prostitute. And she had a heavy smoker's voice and possibly emphysema. She wore her hair in big curls. Um, and the front was big fluffy bangs. She had thick hair and it came down to her shoulders. She had stained front teeth. Four or five of the top teeth in the front of her mouth were stained. And her presence could be intimidating if need be. She was between 5'8 to 5'9 with a thin muscular build. And she had really toned arms, kind of like Angela Bassett did in the movie, What's Love Got To Do With It? She has dark brown or black eyes and she's a medium dark brown skin color. Her personality is very nonchalant and very laid back. She liked to chew gum. Uh, and she says, it's no point in worrying about the person who murdered her because her life, his life, excuse me, because his life has been horrible anyways. She also says DNA evidence will link back to her killer and they will catch him. She gives me very much so bold, loner type of energy. Um, she was a fighter at heart, but looking at her, one wouldn't automatically know that. She was the kind, she was uh, kind of like a person who felt like they were never really, like they never really belonged here anyways. There was something about her that was so, this is not really me. I'm making it work. I'm adjusting myself to this place, but I don't necessarily feel like this place is my place, okay? 
it was really a heaviness in her spirit. So she she also says an old school white two door car is connected to her murder. Now, if this was your family or friend, my message from her is simply, yeah, I'm all right. I also just want to say one more thing about Gwendolyn. So she first came to me while I was working. Uh, was it a couple of days ago? And she told me her last name. Now, I didn't write it down because I was busy at work. And I figured if the message was going to come through, it would come through with all of the other details later. But it doesn't always work like that. So in closing, I will say that Miss Gwendolyn is a very persistent spirit. Light and love to all of her family and her friends. So in closing, I just want to say, pay attention to the signs. If you think one of these messages are for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. Why? Because when messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You'll literally feel it in your spirit if it's for you. So let that be your confirmation. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends get these messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you. Join me, join me for part two. Hey everybody, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam, I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. There is absolutely nothing that you have to do to get a free psychic reading. Just tune in to my channel and if the message is for you, you'll know it. Please share this video with your family and friends as one of these messages may be for them. Now let's get into the first message. Your name is Chantal. You are a light-skinned biracial woman, Indian and white. You went missing when you were 18. When you left, your father never gave up hope and your mother was devastated. I see that you also have a little sister that you left behind. There was a time when you regretted your decision, but you had too much pride to tell your parents that. I see that you've been on the streets and you may have fallen victim to sex trafficking. Uh, You've tried to take your own life before, but you couldn't do it. You were going to use a knife to your wrist. Um, but you're really smart, like book smart. You're also very perceptive. You tend to notice what others don't. I feel like you know that you're wasting your talents when you could do better. Um, when you look at the news and you see things related to AI or technology, it excites you. You're the type that can talk about new gadgets for hours, but the circle that you're currently in, they're not interested in those types of things. My message to you is, I see a window of opportunity coming up for you and you should take it. And I'm being told to tell you that you can have the type of life that you desire, it's not too late. Sometimes a window of opportunity could literally mean jumping out of the window, but only if it's safe to do so. Light and love to you, my friend, I know you got this. Okay, so before moving on to the next message, I have a random message that came to me and I feel like I need to share it. So last week sometime, I was eating at a fast food restaurant and after eating one half of the sandwich, I was about to eat the other half and I was suddenly drawn to take another look at the meat. So I did. And in my spirit, I strongly felt that if I ate that part of the sandwich, it would cause cancer to appear in my body. So I stopped eating it. And when I looked at the sandwich again, it started to disgust me. So I'm sharing this message because, yes, this was definitely a warning for me, but it may be a warning for you as well. So if you can make better decisions, uh, better eating choices, then do so. Light and love to you. Okay, moving on to my next message. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're a woman from Bell Rock, Texas. Uh, you have a thing for uh, bracelets, especially red ones. You've recently had gastric weight loss surgery that you regret. Something went wrong on the operating table and correcting it has been very painful. Um, you're worried that you're worried if you will lose any weight at all. And I'm here to tell you that you will, but it's going to take a toll on you. Your name is Kathy, or that's just something that they call you. You have shoulder length, strawberry blonde hair, and you wear glasses. You have a small mouth that you're insecure about. 
and either you work in social services or your work is uh, social services related, you may even be a social worker. You drive a light yellow buggy and you're always busy. In your personal life, I see you wanting love and support. Um, there is a man coming up for you. He looks to be about six feet tall, a brunette who's medium thick built. Uh, he dresses like a professional in long sleeve button up casual shirts and corduroy type of pants. He wears light baseball caps and has short, thick brown hair. I'm also getting he's a Libra, but I'm hearing that you need to take things slow with him as he just got out of a long-term relationship and he still has a bit of hurt in him. But even so, he has a kind heart, the kind of heart that you've been looking for. He's near a local swimming pool in your area. I'm also hearing that he volunteers at the rec center um, there or near there. June is coming through for a month that you're going to meet him in. My message for you is make your health a priority and focus on being the best version of yourself that you can be. You're already as sweet as pie and you brighten up the lives of so many. But before getting involved with this man, make sure that he's over the ring that he still sometimes wears on his finger. Light and love to you. Okay, so this is my last message for this video. You're a male between 19 and 21 years old, but you look young for your age. Some might even think you were 15 at first glance. You're short in height, maybe about 5'3". You have light brown hair. You wear glasses. I don't know what brand name of these glasses that they are, but they remind me of the kind that like Jeffrey Dahmer wore. You're a comic book guy, and you often walk with your hands in your pockets and your head down. You live in the type of town that seems very religious-based and has a strong sense of Southern values to it. You feel like an you feel like an outcast there. Um, there is a long dirt road on a route that you often take. And on that road looks to be uh, an old white church or a community landmark type of building. It has chip white paint on it. There's a, there's a <coughs> excuse me, there's a dark haired older man that smokes cigarettes. He's about 5'9", 5'11", and he looks upward to 49 in age. He watches you as you walk by. I've seen him wave at you a couple of times. He even gave you an awkward smile a time or two. Now, the thing is, you two are very different people. And he's not just looking for a friend. He's looking for a situation that he can keep hidden if you follow my drift. You, on the other hand, you just want someone you can relate to without them thinking that you're weird because of your different interests. My message to you is, when it comes to the man... Uh, by the white church or that white landmark type of building, be clear on your boundaries, okay? It's also a good idea for you to look into online groups for comic nerds in your area, or if you can't find a group like that, then create one. Your tribe will show up. Just stay consistent. Light and love to you. Okay, guys, so in closing, I just want to say pay attention to the signs. If you think one of these messages are for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. When messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You'll literally feel it in your spirit if it's for you, so let that be your confirmation. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Uh, please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends get these messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you. Hey everybody, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam. I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. Now, there is absolutely nothing that you have to do to get a free psychic reading. Just tune into my channel and if the message is for you, you'll know it. Please share this video with your family and friends as one of these messages may be for them. Now for the first message. Your name is Mitchell and you've never really liked that name because you're a black man and you've never really felt that it suited you well. But your parents come from a time to where assimilation meant survival and you grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood you're about 35 years old and you either are from West Virginia or you now live in West Virginia. You're attractive and popular with the ladies. 
You recently had a health scare that caused you to change your life. I see that you've stopped doing things like drinking or smoking. Uh, I also see that you've increased your water intake. Now, even though you have people around you now, you still have a tendency to feel lonely in a crowded room. I feel like you're currently experiencing depression. I see that you've been crying at night and you find yourself wondering, what's the purpose of you being here? However, I also see speaking engagements in your future, motivational or empowerment types of speeches. I see your voice being more powerful than you are aware of. In fact, uh, there's a group of people waiting for you to lead them. It may have to do with the union or something within a community like an activist, but you are the person that they need. I also feel like you'll be recruited for that position in February. So February of 2023, we're in uh, November of 2022 now, okay? So my message to you is, please don't give up. Uh, there are so many people who both need you and they're counting on you as well. And I do promise you that it will get better. Light and love to you, my friend. Message number two, you're a farmer and you recently were visited by a demonic presence that told you to poison the food for the people, but you didn't do it. Your conscience wouldn't let you harm innocent people who didn't deserve it. But I wanna tell you a little secret, just so you know that you are not alone. A lot of farmers have got that exact same message and they've been afraid to acknowledge it or to ever publicly speak about it. But the truth of the matter is, feeding the people has never been about just feeding the people. It has always been about picking a side between good and evil, so to speak. The evil side has no problem letting the people starve to death. It also has no problem feeding the people poison, so uh, they'll still die, but they'll be uh, satiated in the process. Now, the good side wants to feed the people simply because we all need to eat to survive. So my message to you is continue to fight for what you feel is right in your heart. I feel like you're a trendsetter who will one day be memorialized for their groundbreaking efforts to get things right. Light and love to you, my friend, and we thank you. Okay, guys, so this is my third and final message of the day. This is for Ebony. So your name is Ebony, and you either live in Oakland, California now, or you're from Oakland, California. Uh, you're a junior in college, you're 24 years old, and you write satire. Your work is really good, but I'm being told that you need to tighten up and be careful with it. I see that you have a friend that likes to peek into your book or notepad to see what you're working on. And although it seems innocent, it may not be as innocent as it seems. Fun fact, sis, millions of people all around the world get the exact same idea, right? And do you know what the difference is between them? One word, opportunity. I feel like you may be onto something big, like a certain genre that has yet to be tapped into, or you have a very unique spin on a new genre. Either way, my message to you is, for one, I see your name surrounded by stars, and for two, protect your investment and keep it to yourself until you are ready to share it with the world. P.S. I also see your name spelled with the Y at the end and not the I. My guides say that you'll know what that means. Okay? So light and love to you, my friend. You got this. Okay, guys. So in closing, I just want to say pay attention to the signs. If you think one of these messages are for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. Um, when messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You'll literally feel it in your spirit if it's for you, so let that be your confirmation. You guys share these videos. I encourage you to share. Share because you care. And just because the message isn't for you, don't you want it to reach the person that it is for? Because the next message that I put out just may be for you. And someone doesn't tap you on your shoulder and say, hey, Sam, or, Sam I am posted. So how will you know, right? Okay. So, okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends get these messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam. I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium, and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. 
So there is absolutely nothing that you have to do to get a free psychic reading. Just tune into my channel, and if the message is for you, you'll know it. Please share this video with your family and friends, as one of these messages may be for them. And now, for my first message. This message is for Daniel, and your messenger is your Uncle Henry. Uh, Uncle Henry passed away. He's on the other side. I see that you two were close, and Henry says that he always used to tell you there's just something special about you ever since you were a little boy. He says you know what it is. He says he now knows what it is. You two were already connected in a parent and child dynamic to where he was uh, your father, but that happened in another incarnation. Um, he also says that this message will be tough for you to process as you do not believe in this type of stuff. So you guys moved to Salt Lake City, Utah from Delaware. I'm getting that it was a family move. It wasn't just the two of you. I'm even hearing that your grandma moved too. It was supposed to be for better job opportunities there. Henry's showing me construction work and I feel like he passed over as a result of a work-related injury, but it was an accident. And there was some kind of struggle with either workers' compensation and insurance because of this accident. He, said you, he says that you never really got over it, and he hates that your life took such an awful blow when he left you there, or when he left you here. He also says that you have a girlfriend now, and you won't let her really love you because you're afraid if she gets too close, you could forever lose her too. But the thing is, Daniel, you haven't lost your Uncle Henry because he watches over you all the time. Um, when you talk, he hears you, and he even responds, but you can't hear him. He says he loves you, champ, and when it comes to your girlfriend, it's okay to let her in. He says that he's got your six. Light and love to you, my friend. Okay, this is the second message. Uh, it's from Yolanda. So Yolanda identified as Hispanic and grew up in the Dominican Republic. She was in her mid-40s to early 50s when she passed on. She saw, she's showing me an injury to her left eye, and it was that eye that was lighter than the right eye. It looks like a light blue color. She says that she was blind, blind in her left eye, but she could see about 60% out of her right eye. At the time of her death, she lived in New York. She, was, um, she had a heavy, raspy sounding voice, and she says Pablo took her car right before the murder happened. He said that he would be right back. He was supposed to be going to the Greyhound to pick up his girlfriend, Alyssa or Alicia. She says a man came in the back door with a hammer looking for Pablo, and he began interrogating her, asking her a lot of questions like where Pablo was and where the money was. She says it was a young guy, and he was so impatient that she couldn't speak fast enough for him. Yolanda says that she could tell from the look in his eyes that he didn't mean Pablo any good, and if he caught him, he was probably going to kill him. So she lied, and she said that Pablo took her car and left town. The attacker suffered from some form of ADHD or hypersensitivity disorder, and before Yolanda could blink, he was on top of her, attacking her with the hammer. She fought back as best she could, but the young guy was really strong, and he completely overpowered her. Now, when it was all said and done, the young guy left, and Yolanda was able to call the police. An ambulance came and got her. Uh, she remembers still being conscious in the ambulance, but by the time that the ambulance made it to the hospital, it was too late. Her attacker was a young black male. Uh, he was known to the community and he had a problem with drug addiction. He was in and out of jail for crimes largely related to drug addiction, such as theft, robbery, breaking and entering, and so forth. Police actually suspected that he was involved in Yolanda's murder, but shortly after Yolanda died, so did he. Um, he overdosed in an alley not too far from Yolanda's sister's place. So this message is for Pablo. Yolanda wants you to know that it's not your fault. She knows that you blame yourself because you used to sell drugs and you feel you never should have sold to the attacker. But she wants you to understand that it was her time to go. And even if the attacker changed, she still would have departed at that time. Uh, she says, keep praying to Santa Maria because she sees you when you do. But just know that she's okay, and she says that you will be okay too. Yolanda says that uh, you still have nightmares, and when you do, you pick up the bottle to drink. 
So she says, please don't do that because it's not helping and it's going to get worse in the long haul. If you keep that up, you'll start having GI issues, gastrointestinal issues, and it will get worse. So she says for you to start running again and to look into softball. Again, Yolanda says that she is okay. She wants to stress that, okay? Pablo, she is okay, and that you are going to be okay too. Light and love to you, my friend. Okay, guys, this is my last message of the day. So this is for Shonda. Your name is Shonda. You work in a pharmacy or you are a pharmacist, and you live near Clear Lake. There is a lake or pond or some kind of body of water that is near your job. You go there on your lunch break and you stare into the water and you think of your brother who has passed away. His name is Joshua, but you call him Josh. He was your baby brother. Uh, I'm getting that he was hit by a vehicle while you were supposed to be watching him. He was a teenager at the time, maybe 16, 17 years old. He used to do tricks on his bike like popping wheelies and spinning around in circles with no hands sometimes. He was really good at it. And he liked to watch the types of shows to where the guys drive the dirt bikes and they do the stunts in the air. He felt like he could do that, especially with practice. So he would practice up and down the street. Now, the vehicle that hit him belonged to a major brand, something along the lines of Amazon, UPS, FedEx, or maybe another brand that is popular in your city or state. So it may not be known at the national level, but is very popular in your community. Um, I see that your family filed a lawsuit against this business, and I just want you to know that you will win in the end. Even though this business has dug up so much dirt on your brother, as much as they could find, your family will win that lawsuit. And I'm getting that. Uh, there will be a settlement outside of court that seals the deal for this case to be closed. Shonda, just Joshua knew how to be careful when he rode his bike, and for the most part, he did just that. However, in this case, he felt that it was his last ride. That's partially why he kept on nagging you before he left. He says that he was purposely trying to get on your nerves, so you'd want him away from you. He says he knew you had to study and you needed some peace and quiet anyways, but earlier that day before he uh, left to ride his bike, there was a serious moment that you two shared when Joshua, he took something from your hands and you tried to get it back and he stopped and he looked at you directly in your eyes in a way that made you pause. And he, as he'd never like really looked at you like that before. Then he smiled and gave you the item back and you reminded him that just because he got taller and a bit older, that didn't mean that you couldn't take him down. Joshua enjoyed the back and forth banter you two shared. And he said that his sister is very beautiful. So Joshua's in a good place, Shonda, and your family will win that lawsuit. Light and love to you, my friend. So in closing, I just want to say pay attention to the signs. If you think one of these messages are for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. When messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You will literally feel it in your spirit if it is for you. So let that be your confirmation. And if you didn't get a message this time, come on back next time because you may be in line for a message. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends get the messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you. Hey everybody, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam. I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. Now there is absolutely nothing that you have to do to get a free psychic reading. Just tune into my channel and if the message is for you, you'll know it. Please share this video with your family and friends as one of these messages may be for them. And now let me get into my first message. Okay, guys, quick interlude before we get to message one. I just wanted to put this out there, too. Uh, and I wanted to just reinforce how important it is for you guys to share these videos. Because I've noticed that since I've started this series, YouTube has been holding my videos painfully back uh, from receiving views. So a lot of guys, a lot of you guys are not seeing them. If you have your notifications on, you're probably not getting the notifications. Uh, and you're not seeing the videos in order to watch them because YouTube has been holding my views on every single video this is like my seventh one now um and it just started with this series so there's a lot of resistance for you guys out there to get these messages so i need you guys to share 
share, share, share because you care. Share because it may not be your message today, but tomorrow I could be trying to whisper in your ear and you won't hear me because, again, my vid my views are being held back. Okay, now let's get to the first message. Your name is Shane and you're a fine diner or some type of food reviewer in the metropolitan area. I see that recently you did your friend a solid and you went to review their restaurant. Now, you said that the food was good and you hyped it up to be more than it was simply because this is your friend and you wanted to give them a leg up above the competition. But in reality, you know that the food is subpar at best and um, you didn't have the heart to tell your friend this. But guess what? The customers will and they'll also lose their trust in you. In fact, they'll lose so much trust that your reviews will become just about laughable. This is a learning lesson for you, Shane. You seem to have a habit of being a ride or die friend for your circle, even when they don't deserve it. And you sacrifice more and more of yourself in the process. So my message to you is this. Millions of us pray for a friend like you, but the vast majority of us don't deserve it. If you want to regain the trust of the people, just be honest, even if it hurts. Now, you should go back to your very first review that was loved, right? And show your fans where you lost yourself along the way. You'll be surprised at how many people appreciate your raw honesty and your willingness to be open and transparent. They'll boo and laugh at you before they'll cheer for you yet again. But it will happen. Light love to you, my friend. And now for my second reading. Your name is Ashley and you've uh, recently divorced from a man that, the, that you thought you knew. Your family told you that it was a bad idea to marry him, but you were stubborn and you were in your own conviction to prove them wrong. He's about seven years older than you, and he's originally from another country um, other than the one you live in. I'm being shown a green card, and I see him on a boat leaving you behind, which means that this was some sort of relationship scam. But I also see that you're a young woman, about 18, 19 years old, and I want you to know that there is no shame. You invested a pure heart, Ashley, and ideally, that should be rewarded with a pure heart. But that wasn't the case in this case. He had mixed motives and he saw you as an easy pawn. You're young, beautiful, and you have your whole life ahead of you. He, on the other hand, already has a family and certain promises have already been made to them. The good news is you will be excited about love again. The bad news is it's going to take a while. I'm getting July of 2023 for something significant. But until then, there are several fun dates and intriguing acquaintances lined up along the way. My message to you is work on yourself in terms of healing and building yourself up. Also, make yourself and your accomplishments your priority for right now, and then you will be prioritized by the suitor that is coming in for you. Light and love to you, my friend. Okay, guys, and this is my third and final reading of the day. You are a city official that handles finances, and I see that in the last six months, you've picked up somewhat of a drug addiction. I also see that you've been offered some sort of deal that was corrupt. Now, by nature, you're not that type of person. In fact, you went into this role that you're currently in to affect change. Many have referred to you as an idealist in your past, but your heart has always been in the right place. Now, in terms of wanting to do uh, good by your people, your heart has always been in the right place there. Um, I see that you feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because you sat down with a group of men. It looks like it was about four of them. And you guys sat down and took time to discuss this corruption scheme and how it would work um, and, and why it would go undetected. While listening to their proposition, it didn't feel right and you wanted to get up and leave, but you knew you couldn't because if you did, you'd instantly become a target. And now the deadline for accepting your deal with the devil, so to speak, is coming closer and closer. I see that you've contemplated uh, taking yourself out, um, but you know that if you do that, that your family will greatly suffer. I also see that you've contemplated going to the police, but you've had up close experience with seeing the police involved in things that were flat out illegal. So your trust in them have, has been changed in a way that won't be repaired anytime soon. So what do you do? I see that you continue to ask yourself this question over and over again, and I'm getting a strong pull for you to resign and relocate, okay? I'm getting a strong pull from my guys to let you know you should resign and relocate. Now, I know that this is not what you wanna hear, but this move may be your best move for now. 
I'm also getting that uh, the time will come for you to be a part of a positive change that you'd hope to be. However, you're going to need to rebuild yourself up first, and that means making sure that you have clean hands. The drugs are a crutch, and they're not your friend, okay? You'll also need to gain a network of allies that have your back, um, <clears throat> because now you're simply a nice guy that everybody tends to like or get along with, but you don't have power. And in positions of power, allies matter, especially if you want to change things for the greater good. So my message to you is, it takes a special kind of person to want to change things for the better because you naturally have that in you. That alone separates you from the crowd and you are here to do great things. Mm -hmm. But the greatest thing that you can do right now is to take care of yourself and to take care of your family. I know you're wondering what you'll do in the meantime to make money. And I'm getting that you should open up a nonprofit. Now, um, you should open up a nonprofit that is near and dear to your heart and you should make it a family business. So light and love to you, my friend. And remember, taking big steps leads to big rewards. So in closing, I just want to say to pay attention to the signs, guys. If you think one of these messages are for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. When messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You'll literally feel it in your spirit if it's for you, so let that be your confirmation. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends get these messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam. I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium, and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. Now, there is absolutely nothing that you have to do to get a free psychic reading. Just tune into my channel, and if the message is for you, you'll know it. Please share this video with your family, your friends, as one of these messages may be for them. And now for my first message. You're a man who's very particular about your physical appearance. You're in your early 30s. I see you standing in the mirror for long periods of time, flossing your teeth, and then you uh, stand then you stand there smiling in different ways as if you're getting ready for a picture. I also see that you're very physically attractive. You dress well and you smell nice. And your gym is very familiar with your early morning and late night presence on the weekends. Um, I see that you have your eye on a woman at your gym, but you should proceed with caution because she already has a man in her life, and he has a territorial type of energy about him. Even with that being the case, she is interested in you as well. I see her smiling at you and allowing her eyes to linger longer than they should. Now, you can pursue this and find yourself having an amazing affair, uh, but that doesn't mean that she's going to leave her current partner for you. Sometimes a person just wants some spice in their life and not a new partner. She's heavily invested with this guy, and it uh, greatly surpasses being just on the physical or on the emotional level. I see you super close to leaving, so my message to you is this. Two questions to ask yourself before taking actions are, one, what am I willing to risk for lust? And two, am I better at fight or flight. <laughs> the choice is yours. Light love to you, my friend. Okay, this is my second reading. Your name is Callista. You're in your early 20s, and you're uh, also currently a patient in a hospital. I see that you've been really hoping that you'll make it home for Christmas. Spoiler alert, you won't. It's actually not a spoiler, because you're not going to see this message until after Christmas has already passed. So I'm not exactly sure uh, which, why you're in the hospital, but I do see that it's skin related and it covers a large portion of your lower body. My message to you is don't rush the process. I see that one of the three doctors that are currently overseeing you, um, I see that that doctor may be onto something in terms of your long-term preventative health, okay? So Callista, please be patient and allow the team to release you on the first or the second week of January, okay? You'll be happy that you waited. Light and love to you, my friend. Okay, you guys, this is my third and final reading of the day. Um, Happy New Year, Cheryl Lee. I see that this is going to be a good year for you. You're a biracial Asian female from Baltimore, Maryland. You're in your 40s, 5'6", medium built with tats. 
uh, I see that you have a catering business and I feel like you've been working uh, to get this business off the ground for quite some time now, but you've been met with delay after delay. Well, that's all going to change significantly between February through April of 2023. I see that you'll have new clientele that's going to refer you to their friends. So make sure everyone receives excellent service because uh, it's going to be a combination of good food and amazing service is going to get buzz going around your name. Also, no matter how a person looks, treat them as if they were going to be the person to give you your big break in life. Because I'm getting that the person who initially refers you to their friends, they have a very unassuming look. So, I don't know if you remember hearing about this or not, but many years ago, Oprah Winfrey went into the store, right? And she was looking at some very expensive high-end purses and such. And the lady behind the counter didn't recognize her. So, she told her, oh no, that purse is much too expensive for someone like you to look at, right? Well, needless to say, Oprah Winfrey could have brought that woman and her entire family 10 times over and she would have still been just fine so I'm really laying on the caution here for you um, and it's not because you're not already a great person because you are um, and I know that you usually treat people uh, very well you treat people right right but I also know that you're a human like the rest of us and as a human sometimes we make mistakes so my message to you is expect amazing things in 2023 light and love to you my friend so in closing, I just want to say pay attention to the signs. If you think one of these messages are for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. When messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You'll literally feel it in your spirit if it's for you, so let that be your confirmation. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends of these messages, so the family and friends get these messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you. Hey everybody, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam, I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. Now there is absolutely nothing that you have to do to get a free psychic reading. Just tune into my channel and if the message is for you, you'll know it. Please share this video with your family and friends as one of these messages may be for them. Okay, guys, there is only one reading for today. Uh, and then I'll get into the three gospel songs that can help you tap into the heavenly realm. And now for my first reading. So I have a woman with me that has already crossed over by the name of Janice. Janice is a white female. She had uh, long brown hair that came down to the middle of her back and she was thin in build and was considered tall for her age. She stood about 5'7", and she looked a great deal like Janice from the show The Brady Bunch. In the 1970s, she was a teenager who got kidnapped. Um, she says that she was strangled until she crossed over. Janice also said that her uncle Steve tied her to a tree in a body of water that looks like a river. And that particular area is known to have alligators and other predatory type of animals. She says that he thought that she'd be eaten because of the way that he hung her to a low hanging tree. Uh, he was trying to make her bait, but that didn't work. Instead, there were, there were heavy rains and small wildlife came along and picked at the rope tied to the tree. And eventually Janice's body went floating down the river. Her bones are near a drain by an overpass. Steve, who was uh, 39 years old at the time, was married into the family, and Janice says that he got away with it, meaning that he was never jailed or held accountable for his actions. Uh, Steve had some kind of carpeting slash construction type of business at the time, and two years after Janice went missing, he packed up his business and he moved away. Janice had a stepdad named Oscar who suspected Steve had something to do with it, but the family immediately pounced on him at the mere suggestion that a family member would do something like that. However, Steve has held on to the guilt of his actions for a long time, and in 2005, he confessed his sins to a priest in Utah. Now, this greatly disturbed that, that priest, and 10 to 11 years later, the priest left the church altogether. So Janice still has family in South Florida, uh, and they never gave up hope that one day the truth of what happened to her would be revealed. So my message to Janice's family is, if you think that I'm talking about your loved one, please do your research and don't try to make the piss. Oh Lord, don't try to make the pieces fit if they don't. 
Okay, ask yourself, did your loved one fit Janice's description? Were they a teenager in the 1970s? Um, she just showed me a birthmark on her stomach that looks like half of a butterfly wing. Um, so make sure that your family member had that. If not, search around next family who would know if she had that distinct birthmark, birthmark on her stomach. Um, did she have an uncle through marriage named Steve who worked in carpentry or construction? Uh, and here is a bonus bit of information. Steve had dark brown, thick hair with a thick mustache, and he was around five foot six and slim, but muscular and strong. And he also had dark brown eyes. Okay. Two years after Janice went missing, he moved out of state. To date, I see Steve in a hospital bed, but he hasn't crossed over yet. However, it does feel like he may be close <clears throat> and he is alone. Now, if you think this message is for you, watch the news, scroll on social media, or listen to the radio. When messages are for you, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. You'll literally feel it in your spirit if it's for you, so let that be your confirmation. Okay, now let's get into the three gospel songs that will help you tap into the heavenly realm. First off, you guys must be open-minded and you must actually desire to connect with the heavenly realm. Uh, it's also important that you forget about religion as our creator is not religious. People are. If you are suffering from spiritual attacks, depression, or just have a longing to connect with our creator, you can start, excuse me, by simply listening, okay? And outside of your ears, it is important to listen with your heart because the more that we search, we shall find. This works best if you sit comfortably and are free from distractions. Uh, you also have to be able to tune out the rest of the world and tune into your thoughts. Now, while tuned into your thoughts, uh, you need to ask yourself questions like, I wonder if there's a place for me in heaven. I wonder what it feels like to be loved by God. I wonder how it would feel for God to talk to me. After asking each question, listen to the music and allow yourself to imagine our creator's answer. Okay. And now for the three songs. The first song is called One of Us by Cheryl Pepsi Riley. The second one is called I Love the Lord by Whitney Houston. And the third one is called Open My Heart by Yolanda Adams. Okay. I also want to reiterate that you do not have to be religious or a part of any religion to connect to the heavenly realm. All you have to have is a desire to connect. Okay. A desire to know more or a desire to learn. That's it. Okay. So the more that we seek is truly the more that we begin to find. Okay, guys, that's all that I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Please don't forget to share this video so the family and friends get these messages. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam. I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium, and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. So today I'm talking about what to expect the first year a loved one crosses over. Now, while all of these things can be expected, they are not discussed in the order that you may experience them, okay? So to be clear, when I say a loved one, I am not talking about a distant relative that you've only seen or interacted with twice in your life. Yes, they are a loved one, but they are. I'm talking about somebody more up close and personal, okay? So I'm talking about someone who either breathed the same air as you on a regular basis or a person that made a profound impact on your life. Someone close to new things about you that no one else did or someone that felt like a safe place or someone who felt like home to you. All right. So the first thing that you can expect when a loved one uh, that has crossed over to the uh, wait, no, no, let's go back. So the first thing that you can expect the first year that uh, a loved one has crossed over to the other side is to see your loved one in your dreams. It is inevitable that the physical body will be laid to rest. However, the soul lives on and it does not stop loving you because it has transitioned. This is similar to a loved one moving to a place that is nearly impossible for you to visit them because of the distance between you. Sure, you want to see them, but with all the obstacles in the way, it seems highly likely that that will not be able to happen. 
So what do you do instead? You pick up the phone and you call them and you FaceTime them, right? So a prayer for them is like calling them and a dream with the loved one in it is like a FaceTime call. They are around, they still love you, they miss you, and they want to connect with you, just like you want to connect with them. Dreams with the loved ones are very special and should be treated as such because your loved one had uh, to schedule the meeting in advance just to make the visit. And believe me when I say, they have other things to do, okay? Heaven is not uh, a place for only rest, okay? When you are blessed to get back, the trash still needs to be taken. The trash still needs to be taken out. The trash in this case is inner work that still needs to be done. Moving on to the second thing that you could expect the first year that your loved one has crossed over. Weird things happening with your electricity. Spirits who have crossed over tend to use electricity to communicate with us. So pay extra attention if you hear repeated messages on the TV, radio, or laptop. More than likely, this is your loved one saying, look, or listen to this. Okay, they use music to express their feelings for you and to remind you of the love that they that you two shared with each other. So hearing the same messages two or more times in a row is no mistake. It is communication from your loved one and they can hear you. So if you think your loved one is trying to communicate with you using electricity, say out loud, if this message is from you, John, play that commercial again. And if it plays again, don't dismiss it as a fluke, right? Um, because you have to understand, that took hard work on his behalf. So acknowledge that by accepting the message, okay? When our loved ones cross over, they are given their new bodies, which takes uh, some adjusting to get used to, right? So think of someone who survives a bad accident, right? They have to learn how to walk again. They have to learn how to talk again. Our loved ones are beginners at their new bodies, and they are doing the best that they can with the knowledge that they have. So, of course, over time, they will get better at it. But for now, this is where they are. So just know that they are trying. Okay, so real quick, guys, I forgot to mention in terms of the electricity, it also entails lights turning off and on. Uh, sometimes you're, you'll hear sounds in a room that nobody's in. You'll see a light come on or you'll see the, a light turn off. Uh, another common thing the spirits will do when they're trying to communicate with you is you'll, he you're, you'll hear footsteps. Okay, oh, and another really common thing that they uh, often do is hide your keys. This drives mostly everybody absolutely crazy. Don't know why they do it. Wish we could stop them from doing it so we didn't have to pull out our hair looking for our keys at the last minute. But that is something else that a spirit will do. They'll hide your keys, play with your, your keys, and uh, turn the lights off and on and hearing footsteps. So I just wanted to make sure that I added that in. Okay, now let's move forward. The third thing that you can expect the first year that your loved one has crossed over is nothing and i know that that is a hard one to accept but it's true you can go a long time without hearing or feeling anything from them and that doesn't mean that they didn't make it but what happens is when a person crosses over and they make it back to heaven they have to undergo a reintegration period now during that period of time contact outside of heaven is often limited or not permitted at all Okay, so during this reintegration period, our loved ones are reviewing their current past life, so the life that they just lived with you in it, uh, or even the multitude of the lives that they've had previously to the last incarnation, okay? So they are getting reacquainted with their spiritual bodies in the heavenly realm. They are studying, they are visiting relatives and friends that have passed over before them, and they are living really full lives on the other side. I know so many people say that when we cross over and go home to heaven, that we rest forevermore, but that's absolutely not true. Yes, heaven is all sparkly and loving and all the good things, that's true. But it's also a place of higher learning and evolution. So yes, you can rest in heaven, but you will also have plenty to do. The silence you experience is only temporary, so be patient. So the fourth thing that you can expect the first year that your loved one has crossed over is doubting their love. 
It is common to find yourself wondering if they really loved you like you love them. Separation makes you question things that you know to be true. And what makes it worse is they can't defend their position the way that they would be able to in the flesh. So we have to be really careful of our self-talks. Uh, as it can be easy to find yourself thinking harmful thoughts like, maybe I didn't do enough or maybe I wasn't enough. Many years ago, I had a client whose husband passed on. And during the reading while uh, he was there, she asked if he really loved her because he had cheated on her in the past. But while I was talking on the phone with this client, her husband was standing right in front of me and it hurt him so much that she felt that way. He still loved her with everything in him and, and he held a, a heavy guilt for his actions. So cheating, ladies and gentlemen, does not mean that your spouse doesn't love you. I know a lot of podcasters and other content creators would beg to differ, but it's true. Cheating itself is for educational purposes, believe it or not. Why? Because we learn our best lessons through adversity. Uh, that's another story. We can go more into that, but that is a truth. So, okay, guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it and found this list helpful. Please share it with your family, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, because I guarantee you somebody needs to hear this right now. Somebody around the world is waiting for this video right now. Let's all help them get it. Okay, so to all of you who have been guided to my video by chance, just know that your loved ones are working hard hard on the other side okay and i pray light and love surrounds you always so my contact information is in this in the description box down below and until next time remember anybody can be a superhero even you